a very hearty welcome to all of us and uh, thanks to the organizers for such a mega event. It, I think it requires a huge round of applause for such a uh, great event and for the platform uh, for us to discuss a very insightful discussions and take away from this uh, room. Uh, and the title of this discussion being mobile only content distribution. As we speak, we are generating content. From the time we wake up, uh, literally before we open our eyes, our uh, fingers reach out to the chat apps or the social networking apps. So from then, we consume and generate content. The good morning itself is a content. And uh, according to the stats, 56% of uh, online content that's been created is consumed uh, on mobile devices. And uh, what is the content that has been uh, created? Uh, where is it generated? And who's consuming it? Where is it consumed? What are the different types of content? This is, uh, is a question which we all have. And uh, what best could happen? I'm literally uh, in between the newsmakers. Here I introduce uh, Radhika Shukla from uh, News Republic. Uh, News Republic has got around 50 million installs and around 4.6 rating. That's like, you know, where every app ideator would love to have that. And uh, Justin, who's actually the one who decides what to get distributed and in which channel. He's a music aggregator and being a very powerful person to decide what gets distributed. And uh, we have Abhishek. He is a very interesting person who decides what we see. Literally, what is the content that I'm going to click next? Uh, he's from Mobusi. And uh, we have Sahil. 50 apps. So you can imagine how many downloads. And he's from in Times Internet, uh, mostly uh, from Ghana to Times of India. We have literally used all his apps. And he hates marketing. And the poster boy, I should say, uh, Deepit from InShots, uh, the millennial's favorite. I think uh, the time given to us also is in short. So I will start with uh, Deepit. Uh, uh, you have made the content in such a way uh, that uh, the complete consumption of news, when uh, there was a day that uh, we used to open the newspaper and see, get overwhelmed about it. And now you have made it into 60 words. Yeah. Uh, so uh, thanks a lot for uh, inviting me on this panel. So. Uh, I think the major source from where we uh, understood that there was a need for such a product is that uh, most of us, most of the, when I was in college, most of the people in our peer group were not reading news uh, regularly, uh, neither from the newspapers nor digitally. Although uh, they had access to the internet, they were browsing the internet, still they were not reading news. And it was not that they were not interested in reading news, uh, but uh, they were perhaps missing the right product, which gives them the experience of browsing through a lot of uh, headlines. So uh, we realized that most of the people, what they do is they open the newspaper, browse through like 100 headlines. If they are interested in say 30% or 40% of those articles, they just read one paragraph uh, and then they just move on and uh, only say one or two articles, they would read the complete story. So there was no one product that was uh, designed uh, there was no content which was designed to serve this kind of a consumption pattern. Uh, so that is what we started with. So 60 words was like three sentences, one paragraph, and you get a complete overview of what that story is. This is uh, very interesting. In the, actually, in the traditional uh, model of, of goods, the flow of goods, we used to produce, then distribute, and then consume. But here, you did this reverse. So you knew how it has been consumed, and then you decided where to distribute, which is apps, and then you created content. So you produced in a way it is. Yeah. So just to uh, tell you about how we started, so I did not have a smartphone at that time. I just, we just knew that uh, content has to be short. So we launched a Facebook page with 60-word uh, stories of uh, the top news uh, stories that, are, uh, that people would want to read. Then we launched our website, then we launched our app just because everybody was launching apps. After that, we realized the power of the smartphone that uh, we pulled in some money and we bought a smartphone for uh, amongst the co-founders. And mm -hmm. then we realized that what the smart power of the smartphone is that people would want to consume short stories just like mostly on the go. Uh, so that is how we evolved to an app only uh, or app first uh, news product. 
Okay, okay. Uh, Sahil. Hi. Thanks for having me here. Uh, very interesting panel. And uh, I represent Times Internet, and uh, we have close to 20 different news apps. And our strategy is uh, a little different from what Deepit mentioned, with all due respect to InShorts. Um, we, we basically cater to all audiences, whether it's uh, English, Hindi, Marathi, Telugu, Tamil. So we have a news app for each uh, language. And alongside that, uh, we are present on desktop, web, and app. So our idea is uh, let the user consume news where he is present. Do not restrict him to a certain platform. Uh, at the end of the day, news can get consumed at any platform. It just matters what is the quality of the content. We get about 175 unique month, a million unique users every month, almost 30 billion page views. And, and the average duration is almost about five to seven minutes. That means every user who's coming in is at least consuming three to four articles. But in that, uh, what is the content they are consuming in five to seven minutes of thing? Uh, what is the type of content they consume? We basically cater to all masses, so which means that we will have hardcore news, political, economics, lifestyle. But at the same time, we create a healthy balance with entertainment also. And if you look at uh, some of our news apps like TOI, TOI itself has more than 50 million users. And we have audiences coming from India and abroad, and that's substantial based on NRIs as well. And this is essentially very serious news that gets catered to the audiences. But alongside that, we have an aggregation app called NewsPoint. And NewsPoint allows the user to read news in 11 languages. And that would include publications which are inherent to TIL, as well as third-party publications, ranging from entire host of entertainment, recipes, jokes, so you name it, and we got it. That's the kind of variety we want to give to the users. So uh, this is a more everything in one. In one. Yes, yes. OK. So uh, let's move to Abhishek uh, for an intro and yeah, your take on uh, Thank you. I mean, we all have seen how the content industry has changed. I mean, it's no more about generic content. There's a lot of clutter. People have started making content for their own audience, you know, for their own geography, some particular target. Now, companies like Mobusi, I mean, like an ad network, a lot of tools available where you can target a particular audience in a particular geo. I think that is helping a lot in the content distribution because everyone, at the end of the day, want to monetize their content. It's for sale. I'm sure yesterday when you know when we were witnessing the stand-up comedian which you were talking about, now he has his own audience. You know, and people are talking about Russell Peter. That's no, that's a content very specific to a particular genre. A particular, you know, at a kind of target audience. The kind of platforms like Mobusi gives you that kind of leverage where you can actually approach those particular audience and can monetize your content. So, for example, if Justin makes a Canada content, we actually sell it that content in an uh, operator called Due in UAE. So, it gives you that kind of leverage where you are making content in Karnataka and selling and making money in uh, an operator like Due, which is in UAE. Okay. So uh, it's more about the distribution which has gone. Uh, obviously, in digital, there is no geography. Right. While uh, we created from some, some small, uh, small, very, uh, small village and thing, it, it just gets global. Right. But how uh, do we decide? I think we should come to the question a little later after introducing our uh, uh, Justin and Radhika. Uh, Justin, you've been distributing music as a thing. Uh, can you please explain uh, how it's, is it? Music is really large. It's, it's across uh, language. It's uh, there's no beyond everything, music. And now you, when you aggregate and you decide, what does it take to? Thank you so much uh, for this opportunity. Uh, it's, it's really a challenge, actually, when we talk about music, actually. Uh, we basically acquire music content and we distribute it to various platform players. And especially, you know, we distribute it through uh, telco, all the major telcos in India, international, and uh, also we distribute it through various platform players like web players, like Savan, Ghana, Raga, uh, these type of players, actually. Uh, music is actually, uh, the digital music in India is actually 3,000 crores. No one knows, and we just saw the statistics that uh, music app is one among the top, actually. And uh, if we learn how to monetize the content and we need to distribute it in the right channel, uh, it's, it's really big. Thank you. 
uh, Radhika, you, uh, News Republic literally has a, a amazing content alliances. How is the content aggregated and how do that content, aggregated content, they decide that this has to be on the app or a web? What is your take on it? How is the news specifically consumed on mobile devices with your experience? Uh, so uh, thanks, Kritika, uh, for, uh, for the question. And uh, see, our take on uh, the product, News Republic, is a little different. We have around 1,700 uh, global news partners, which include all genres, tech, politics, Bollywood, entertainment. And the way we, uh, uh, the way we sh share this content to our users is through heavily personalization. Uh, when I say personalization, it means that no two users of News Republic will have an identical screen. We build the profiles of the, if you are assigned user, uh, on day three, a profile of the user is created. On day six, and on then day 60. So it keeps on evolving. The more you read, the more it recommends the similar kind of articles. And this we have been uh, able to do it uh, because we have 1,700 article uh, providers. We have around 60,000 articles in our app every day. Uh, we do it through. Uh, we have developed something called TagNav, which is our artificial engine uh, semantic engine, and it is able to pick up tags, etc from the content uh, and you know and then it uh, opens the news doors i mean it's like a tag cloud so you can go it's we are not organized like a regular sections of a newspaper like politics international uh, entertainment etc but as a user you can go deep and follow anything say if you want to follow a political party like just aam aadmi party or you just want to read every news on nsg or any topic or maybe oil prices or bsc sensex so you can go that deep into the article uh, into the topics and read about it so that, that that's the reason the while we have a huge huge uh, bunch of articles every day but we have something for every user to go granularly into it and we also build uh, even our push notifications and all are kind of very, very segmented that if you have read certain number of articles from a topic within 30 days, uh, that's how we target and you know notify people rather than doing a, a mass uh, to everybody. Okay, so, okay. Yeah. of course the end user gets to see only, the one is chosen by the bot, I mean based on the uh, BI, business intelligent and the usage pattern. But end of the day we distribute these uh, content for uh, either getting it viral or for monetization. End of the day, I read a news or I listen or I do something for my personal thing. So the way I consume every bit of content is different. I would be grazing. I would be just, you know, it's a background medium. Music becomes a background medium today in the uh, Ghana Bay plays in the background, but uh, in tablet I watch it uh, doing something and so how do I create content for such a distribution on different channels for a different type of consumption? Uh, anybody, one of you can... I think I would agree that there is a huge uh, potential for grazing, as you call it, or in other words, passive browsing. Yeah. So, yes. uh, so basically, if there are two kinds of use cases. One is very active uh, content seeking, which is mostly driven by search. Uh, in uh, mostly driven by search or someone uh, or you're doing research around some some topic but uh, around passive browsing it is something that you don't know what you want to read you are actually uh, uh, want to spend your time productively and that is the uh, area that you want to uh, uh, you want to fill your time productively so now the challenge is that how do we create content for passive browsing right uh, yes so uh, what uh, we have done, I would be able to comment on that, is that since you are, uh, since all the news articles are in, in shorts, you can just skip and just, uh, even if the article is not relevant for you, it is, it is hardly takes a, uh, um, a few seconds to just skip the art, uh, skip the card and go to the next story. Uh, apart from that, I think uh, uh, in terms of video format as well, there is a huge potential for to do, uh, potential for uh, companies to create short form video format which can be consumed uh, uh, on the go anytime. Uh, okay, how do I monetize? I, uh, end of the day, why do I create and distribute content is to monetize. End of the day, okay, I get that five second of as a content creator, I get the five second fame, but I, I obviously cannot eat my bread with that. I need to monetize it. So does my content, I think uh, Abhishek would be the right person to answer this. So finally, how do I make the buck out of it? 
So I think this is a very basic question where... And where do I make? That is no, the I mean, question. I, mean, no, I didn't mean that. I mean, everyone thinks, you know, a lot of uh, laymen, you know, that how come this service can be free? So this is where the people like us come in the picture and, you know, we kind of do a tie-up and we call it Publisher Alliance where we do tie-up with the applications like that and we purchase the inventory and we provide to the advertiser. So there's an entire chain which ultimately the customer gets benefited. We get benefited by providing the traffic to the advertiser. At the same time, app guys can still keep on making the app and providing their services free of cost to the customer. So in the entire is a chain where everyone gets a value. So that's how we kind of... Uh, but do you think, uh, as, as India, as a globally uh, thing, but let, in India, are we ready to pay for content? Yes, definitely. I mean, we are all witness that, you know, initially we all used to assume that people don't pay for content. Okay. Today, pay, people are paying for Netflix, Hotstar, you name the app and people are paying. But that is a very min minuscule percentage. Are you looking mm -hmm. at growing at and do you think uh, which, that channels would be strong enough for us to... Uh, if you see the stats, really, I mean, you know, you'll be surprised that people staying in semi-urban area, rural areas, they also pay for the content. They might not be the, that kind of content which we are used to, but they do pay for the content. However, the tendency is to get the content free, as we were discussing also, that, you know, people like to have the pirated content or to download free. There will always be a leakage, but the economy has grown from uh, just a free users to people who actually want to pay for either, you know, for a good content or for, you know, having a download, which is what they want. So people I, do pay. I can see Justin and Radhika no, are waiting every, to, uh, you know. We are paying today for uh, music content, actually. Okay. So you name the top telcos, all the top telcos are good paymasters, actually. You name Savan, Ghana, Raga, YouTube. You know, if you learn how to monetize in YouTube, that itself is enough for you to generate uh, your own revenue. That's an ad model. Yeah. Pardon? That is an ad model. So you, you are uploading the content on the user-generated uh, platform like YouTube or any other, and then you uh, put it... At the end, you know, the content creator is happy that he's getting money from YouTube. That is what is important. So somebody pays for it. No, most of them. No. So, someone has to pay for the content, for the creation. Yeah. So, so either it's uh, customer paying or uh, the ad You, you said the customers are ready to pay and he says it's, it's the advertisers so, uh, who's going to pay. So they are both the kind of audience. So that's why you see a lot of uh, packs which are launched as free as well as uh, premium packages. So there is a customer where who doesn't want to pay but they don't mind seeing ads and everything. So they are the people like us come and you know, we kind of pay to the guys who have met this kind of package. And there are other people who don't want to see ads and they are ready to pay 150 bucks for a month. And those are premium audience and they pay. So you have both the kind of customer and somehow... Um, Anyone from the audience, you know, who wanted to become a star tomorrow? Who, who really wanted to become a superstar tomorrow? Yes, yes. Uh, today there's an opportunity that they can become a superstar. Uh, you are Hani Singh, you know, you, you yeah. are Hani Singh. Uh, he was introduced through YouTube and today he's big. Okay. Okay. Now, now uh, this since we have talk, spoken about the YouTube and things, what kind of a content should we produce to distribute in which channels so that it gets any it type reaches. of content? Any type of content. No. So, so do, I, do you say that a textual content is good enough for me? Video a blog, a very content black and white blog, content. should do good. Uh, I uh, yeah. Yeah. So uh, I. Uh, just to share a data point uh, from our uh, what we have seen uh, in terms of our users' behavior, that uh, uh, one we also link the shorts that we produce to uh, some original content. Uh, so that original content can be textual or a video content, and we've seen that the click-through rates for uh, when the short is linking to a video content is like ten times more than that of uh, textual content. Uh, and that uh, gives rise, so how it does not depend on the content category. It might be a very hardcore news, still if uh, uh, it's a video, then it's 10 times that of uh, textual. So that uh, clearly shows that people who are uh, on the go, uh, they would want to consume more of video as compared to textual, long form content. Okay, R Radhika, what is your take on this video content on your uh, app, does that get distributed and and consumed well on your uh, of the uh, or the video also and uh, video is always the most high engaging uh, engaging form of content but again coming back to that question of monetization of content i believe that uh, yes there are people who are ready to pay for content 
but do any, I mean, if statistically you look at uh, uh, any, for, I mean, any form of content creation throughout the globe, maybe even companies like NY Times, Guardian, or anybody who has done paywall, or any, any sort of thing, that's a section of people who are willing to pay, or even in terms of actual revenue, which is through, coming through the paid or subscription channel, is very less. Click-through rates for a particular content and all, th those are good numbers, but ultimately I feel that uh, there is still a very small percentage of people who would pay for content. Okay. Uh, we are kind of uh, very close to completion, so I would like to put a question to the panel. I think this is very specific uh, to Sahil. Uh, if a layman, if a layman, just uh, whether it is a brand or a, a person or uh, an individual or a big brand, all they want to uh, do is create a kind of a content that will go viral and in turn monetize. For example, if I'm just a cupcake manufacturer, and how do I uh, create content, where do I distribute, and how do I monetize? Sahil, I think. Yeah, actually, that's a very good question, and uh, it will definitely help a lot of people who are looking to start up and don't have a lot of funds. Uh, firstly, viral content is always that content where you don't pay a single penny. It obviously takes off on a contagious route, and I think uh, while, while I was at Big Basket before Times, I think we had a similar uh, case study to see, and uh, there was an online food blog, and this food blog had uh, started a small business in the vicinity where they would deliver a very small order through an affiliate model where somebody living in, in Building A would be actually making the food and delivering to a person in Building B. And this was... Uh, this was basically picked up by word of mouth so much that the website started getting a lot of traffic directly. And the moment these guys opened up gates on their Facebook page, they had some 2,000, 3,000 likes coming in. Daily, almost 50 people would go and tweet this or put it up on the Facebook walls, and you can, you can understand the kind of virality that this started picking up. Uh, in a matter of almost three to four months, we had people who are coming in, posting us back on LinkedIn, telling us that we would like to get featured on your blog. That sounds like a very fairy tale. Uh, if, if we all could have, you know, the five steps, the crack it, okay, create content on this and this and this and put it on uh, all possible channels. But uh, do I have friends or do I have networks? How do I think? And this discussion is, uh, I'm sure, 30 minutes is very short. Uh, that's while the topic is very interesting, it is equally challenging to find uh, one solid answer. It's like, create this, distribute it here monetize or make it viral and, and popular or whatever the objective is. Uh, I'll open uh, the session for Q&A uh, for the super panel here. Uh, basically, I have two questions. First question I have for Deepit and second one for the news to public person. Uh, Deepit, uh, I want to ask you, the InShorts idea was very interesting as far as uh, news and the readable news is concerned. Uh, is a uh, similar thing possible for videos? Uh, it could be either news or maybe uh, for students uh, say they want to know about a concept uh, and uh, the thing I'm thinking about is the video should be maximum two minutes because you're talking about short content. Uh, so like have you checked about the feasibility of this? I mean consumption of uh, such content in videos in lesser than two minutes. And uh, the question uh, I have for Karima it is regarding granularity like uh, see uh, once when you are actually uh, reducing like uh, personalizing the news consumption then you will know okay these are the huge chunk of uh, people uh, who really uh, like this kind of news or whatever so can you further uh, monetize on that data yeah so um, definitely a video short videos is a definitely a very interesting idea and uh, what we have seen is that uh, the video complete so once the click through happens on a video story uh, video completion rates are much higher uh, as compared for shorter videos. So people uh, tend to watch, if, if it's a 10 minute video, then people will drop off in the first uh, five to 10 seconds. A lot of people drop off in the first five to 10 seconds uh, as soon as they know that it's a long video. But if it's a shorter video, they tend to stick on and watch the complete video. So short videos is definitely an interesting space. Uh, but again, I would say that uh, automating clippings from the sh uh, vid original video and creating a shorter version is not very productive uh, because uh, it will give you a glimpse of the story, but uh, it is not a really a consumable content. So at the moment in our app, we use this personalized data to give the personalized content uh, the user wants as per his requirement and time. 
uh, in terms of monetizing and throwing really, really relevant ads for those that personalized data, we still rely on a lot of ad networks who have this data. Uh, I mean, and I'm sure they have much more data because they're going through so many apps than what we get on our, uh, on our app. So I, we use the, the, that data which we get in our app, we largely use for segmenting the news for the user rather than showing ads, uh, relevant ads for that. Yeah. It's Nikhil Sharma. I just want to ask you one very important question about what do you think about the voice based news app? Like even the Mr. Prime Minister is also doing Man Ki Baat and he's reaching out of people uh, throughout India. And what do you think about this future and what the three things we should do to start that kind of app? Thank you. Uh, the question was voice. voice on the news on voice. And who is this question to? Uh, from Mr. Uh, Sahil? In short. In short. In short. For okay, minutes. people. Yeah, so I think audio news is an interesting space. Uh, so basically, you're talking about short audio clippings for news, right? That is what you're saying? Yeah. So yeah. like what she said, it's yeah. video and now it's audio. Yeah, so I think audio space is definitely interesting. Uh, but I think uh, eventually, uh, so it's uh, uh, what, what we, uh, we had uh, a lot of internal discussions about the audio space. Uh, but I think eventually, the audio piece will not uh, survive a long way uh, in future because def video consumption will kick in. So uh, audio will it, it has it definitely has a use case right now in the market, uh, but it would not survive in the long term. Okay, but that kind of could be a very good background medium too. Video requires you to be present with that. Audio allows you to be a background medium at the same time consume it well. Yeah, so I would uh, uh, take a contrarian view here. I would say that for consuming an audio, you need to pull out an earphone, plug it in, and then listen to it. Uh, I would put it on a speaker. Yeah, so people in general do not, uh, when they are in uh, on the go, they do not prefer uh, putting things on speaker. So what we've seen that it probably audio less video is a better format than audio. Okay, and uh, obviously we can we can discuss this offline. Very interesting views. Uh, thank you so much for being a great audience. Thank you so much.